Welcome to this edition of Africa 360, the current affairs show that unpacks news from your continent. We go beyond the headlines uh, to certainly bring you what you won't get anywhere else. If it's about the African continent, we'll definitely be bringing it to you. I'm Chris Marileng, and you're watching Africa 360. Zimbabwe's historic elections are just days away. These polls have been described as a watershed moment in that country's political history. This week on Africa 360, we continue our comprehensive coverage of Zimbabwe's upcoming elections. We've brought you news about ZANU-PF last week, but now we turn our focus to the Movement for Democratic Change, otherwise known as the MDC. It's been a difficult road for Morgan Twangirai, both politically and personally. His party initially burst onto Zimbabwe's political scene more than 10 years ago. And in that time, Twangirai has been an open critic of President Robert Mugabe. We must give Mugabe a resounding defeat. He was once arrested and charged with treason. That was later dismissed, though. And... Who can forget those images after he was brutally assaulted? That hasn't dampened his spirits, though. The MDC became a popular political party soon after its formation. It has a large following, especially among young people and the country's urban working class. One of the party's main missions has been to revive the country's fledgling economy. It's also focused on creating jobs for millions of unemployed Zimbabweans. Twangirai's ambition of winning elections have been thwarted on several occasions, but he came very close to unseating Mugabe in Zimbabwe's last elections. Twangirai pulled out of the runoff election, though citing vote rigging. In 2009, Twangirai formed a government of national unity with President Robert Mugabe and Arthur Mutambara. Under SADC's guidance, the three signed a political agreement that would see the country return to democratic rule. The agreement included several key reforms before elections could take place. But Twangirai says Mugabe has, throughout the process, made unilateral decisions against the terms of the agreement. Mugabe declared July the 31st as the election date but opposition parties cried foul they maintain the date is too soon and that key reforms have not been implemented as morgan Sangrai, the prime minister of this republic of zimbabwe and the president of the mdc i will not accept a situation where zimbabweans will yet again be railroaded and frog merged to another illegitimate and violent violent election well, that was uh, Prime Minister Morgan Twangirai lamenting the fact that the upcoming polls, according to him, will not be free and fair. Let's quickly take a look at the history of the MDC and how this party has evolved since it was formed uh, 14 years ago. Well, as you can see from our graphic there, the Movement for Democratic Change was founded in 1999 as an opposition party to the ruling ZANU-PF, the Zimbabwe African Union patriotic front. Well, the MDC, as you can see from our graphic, was a party that was made up uh, from a broad coalition of civil society groups, in particular uh, the trade union uh, movement, the Congress of uh, Trade Unions of Zimbabwe, that is the ZCTU, academics mostly from Zimbabwe's middle class, also uh, formed, uh, contributed to the formation of this party. The party was formed on a platform of uh, providing democracy and freedom uh, for all Zimbabweans. In 2005, the party split after Twangi Rai uh, objected to a decision by his lieutenants to participate in uh, Senate uh, elections. This resulted in two factions of the MDC, the MDCT led by uh, Morgan Twangi Rai and the MDCM, which was then uh, led by Arthur Mutambara, who has since been replaced by Welshman Ngube. Some observers believe the party was weakened as a result of uh, the split uh, between uh, forming the two formations. Despite the division, the two factions both got seats in the turbulent 2008 uh, general elections. In fact, MDCT ended ZANU-PF's two-third majority by winning 100 seats. Mugabe's party emerged with 99 seats. 
the Ngube-led MDC won only 10 of uh, those seats. Well, as you can see from our next slide coming up just now, after those disputed polls in 2008, Morgan Twangirai, uh, President Mugabe, Arthur Mutambara formed a government of national unity after a protracted uh, SADC mediation forming the unity government. And this paved the way for this year's polls, which will take place on the 31st of July. Well, joining me now to take our conversation a little bit further is Professor Brian Roftopoulos. He's a renowned Zimbabwean scholar and activist. He joins us uh, from our Cape Town uh, studios. Uh, Prof, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, on uh, Africa 360. Let's, let's get right into it. W one of the, the, the things about the opposition is that um, the opposition has been in what has been described as a very difficult marriage with the former governing party, ZANU-PF. How would you rate the opposition's performance uh, during the past four years of this government of national unity? I think it's been a mixed bag. Um, you know, they've had a difficult time learning statecraft, having to deal with all the obstacles of joining a government where key levers of state control are beyond them. Um, and they've had to really try and uh, learn very quickly how to deal with that. They've also, I think, let themselves down through a lack of coordination between the MDCs, their own problems of, of uh, how they've operated, uh, you know, issues around corruption, personal issues around the leadership, a lack of coordination on certain policy questions. So I think, uh, really, it's been a mixed bag. Now, uh, Prof, would, would you say they've done enough? Uh, we are on the verge of yet another uh, election. A lot of people argue that the MDC really hasn't focused on a lot of the procedural issues that they should have focused on in order to ensure at least a free and fair outcome in these elections. Look, I think since the beginning of the discussions of the mediation, they've been pushing around issues uh, on the implementation of the GPA through SADC, through their own processes. Uh, and one shouldn't underestimate the manner of the blockages around this process. Mm -hmm. I think certainly they could have done more through coordinating between the two MDCs and pushing their positions jointly, which has allowed ZANU-PF to block, certainly, for example, around the Mutambara question. Mm. The, if they had been working together, that, that foil could not have been used as much as it was and uh, certain things, certain more things could have been done. Um, but as I said, one shouldn't underestimate the real blockages that they faced in this process. Let's talk a little bit about uh, this rupture between uh, the, the two MDC formations. One would have imagined, particularly during this watershed moment, that the MDC, both of the parties, would have formed a coalition uh, to unseat ZANU-PF. This hasn't happened. Uh, uh, Professor Ngube himself has indicated that uh, he, he's going to run or stand in these elections as a presidential candidate. Yes, I think it's been a huge failing that they've been able to come up, they've been unable to come up with a, a joint position on the elections. Um, in 2008, they suffered for it, and I think they're likely to suffer from it again. The problem is their long-standing issues which have not been resolved. Uh, issues that go back to the 2005 split. In 2007, an attempt was made to have an election pact in December of that year. Um, that failed largely around the problem of um, or, uh, parliamentary seats and the people not willing to give up certain positions in the event of a pact. There's a huge amount of lack of trust between them, which runs very deep. Uh, but I think, notwithstanding that, there could have been some common positions put together, uh, especially given the kind of uh, obstacles that they face. Now, let's uh, get your opinion on a possible outcome. You referred to it, but I'm going to pin you down here, Prof. Do you think Morgan Swangirai can unseat President Robert Mugabe in this round of elections? I think that if there is a reasonably free and fair election, that is certainly a possibility. Notwithstanding the kind of opinion polls uh, that have indicated a drop in support, I think the, the base that uh, Tongirai has is still 
is still substantial. And that if there is a level of uh, freeness and fairness in the processes, uh, I think that's a real possibility. The problem, of course, is the, the issues we've seen around the electoral process, the voters' role, the registration, the chaos around the special voting, um, the legacy of 2008 in terms of the threat of violence. These are issues that if the, if the kind of uh, uh, procedures around these are not sufficiently dealt with, then we're still going to have a problem. Well, thank you so much for sharing those key insights with us. That was uh, Professor Brian Roftopoulos uh, joining us from our studios in Cape Town, giving you the lowdown on the state of uh, main opposition politics in Zimbabwe. Do stay with us because after the break, we'll bring you the views of the MDC on these upcoming elections. And this is only on Africa 360.